Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good night, depending on where you are in the world. This is Gloria White and I'm coming to you from Utah, USA. Today, I was looking through my Bible actually last night and I came across the book of Nehemiah and I was reading the first chapter and I thought, wow, this is really appropriate for now, for us at this time. And, and starting in, in chapter 1, but verse 3, and in, in the beginning here, it says, Nehemiah and, and a friend of his came to him and told him about Jerusalem. And in verse 3, it says, And they said unto me, The remnant that are left of the captivity there in the province are in great affliction or distress and reproach. The wall of Jerusalem also is broken down, and the gates thereof are burned with fire. And it came to pass, when I heard these words, that I sat down and wept, and mourned certain days, and fasted, and prayed before the God of heaven, and said, well, here's his prayer, I beseech thee, O Lord God of heaven, the great and awesome God that keepeth covenant and mercy for them that love him and observe his commandments. Let thine ear now be attentive and thine eyes open that thou mayest hear the prayer of thy servant, which I pray before thee now day and night for the children of Israel, thy servants and confess the sins of the children of Israel, which we have sinned against thee both I and my father's house have sinned we have dealt very corruptly against thee and have not kept the commandments nor the statutes nor the judgments which thou commandest thy servant Moses remember I beseech thee the word that thou commandest thy servant Moses saying if I if ye transgress, I will scatter you among the nations. But in verse 9, he says, But if ye turn unto me, and keep my commandments, and do them, though there were of you cast out unto the uttermost part of heaven, yet will I gather them from thence, and will bring them unto the place that I have chosen, to set my name thereon. Now these are thy servants and thy people, whom thou hast redeemed by thy great power and by thy hand. O Lord, I beseech thee, let now thine ear be attentive to the prayer of thy servant, and to the prayer of thy servants, who desire to fear thy name and prosper. I pray thee, thy servant this day, and grant him mercy in the sight of this man. For I was the king's cupbearer. And I thought how appropriate that that he was praying for Israel and, and you know, when you're saved you become part of Israel. So this is this is very similar to our situation, I mean, Jerusalem was broken down and burned. And what is going on in our cities where all this violence is taking place and, and people are just turning a blind eye and people are leaving these places in droves. They're packing up and just walking away with whatever they can take with them. So it's like they're being scattered. And Nehemiah, he begins to fast and pray. And he's talking to Heavenly Father and he says, Remember, I beseech thee the word that thou commandest thy servant Moses, saying, If ye transgress, I will scatter you abroad among the nations. But if ye turn unto me 
and keep my commandments and do them, though there were of you cast out unto the uttermost part of heaven. Yet will I gather them from thence and will bring them unto the place I have chosen to set my name there. Mike Pence, our vice president, he reminds people often about praying to God to seek, seek to repent and to seek God's face that he should turn back to us and heal our nation. I hope that every Christian out there is seriously considering humbling themselves before God Almighty and seeking a reprieve of what is coming upon our nation. He does hear our prayers and he does answer us. Let us seek his favor let us seek, seek his healing. Let us praise his holy name, for he is awesome and powerful. And I just thought when I read this, it was like pow, right in my face. This sounds exactly like what's happening with us. Though we're not in Israel, the country, but we are Israel, the people, and our people are being scattered, and our country is being burned, and things are being broken down, statutes, statues, and are we really keeping God's commandments that he told to us? that we've been taught, most of us, since we were little children. Let us remind ourselves of those things and also what he taught us to care for widows and orphans and to love one another as he loved us. And so I think there's hope for our country because God is still in heaven and we, his children, he hears our prayers. So I would ask that everyone would fast and pray earnestly because the situation is serious and only God in heaven can fix it. There's nothing that a man's hand can do to correct everything that's happened. Only God can heal us. Only God can heal our nation. Let us seek him with everything in us, everything that we possess. Let's seek our Heavenly Father. And, 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 I, and I hope and pray that everyone can remember the commandments and to follow them, and to love one another, and to care for the widows and orphans. Just think of all the little children that need things, and their parents can't get them now. Maybe it's a shirt, a pair of pants, some underwear, some new shoes and socks. You know, kids are growing, and a lot of parents aren't working. And there's no money. Um, once they can muster the rent and their utilities and what food they can put on their table, the other things are just falling by the wayside. And we have a lot of widows out there that are struggling, not only <clears throat> with, you know, personal needs and food, but also with loneliness. If you have your neighbor's phone number, call them and talk with them. Spend some time on the phone listening to them. 
they may tell you the same story over a hundred times. But to them, they're just talking. They're, they're just, they're just expressing their memories. They're sharing their life. Leave some flowers on their porch. Take and make, make the kids have them make some little cards, you know, and, and take them and, and stick them in their mailbox for them to enjoy. To be reminded that, that they're not alone and that they're cared for and thought about. It's a, a very important thing that we can do for one another now is to care for each other in small ways. There's, you know, not a lot that people can do as far as going in and visiting with the elderly. They're um, isolating. They're trying to stay home where they're safe from the virus. And it's lonely. And even if there wasn't a virus, they're still, they get lonely. Their children have moved away. They have grandchildren, but they've never even seen them maybe, you know? It's, um, families are often split apart just by the circumstances of life. And now it's even more difficult. So do try to look after one another and try to care for each other the best way that you know how within your means. You know, if you make some muffins, it wouldn't hurt to put one in a bag with a little kind note and stick it on their porch or hang it on their front door just to let them know you're thinking about them, that they're not forgotten and they're not alone. You know, put your phone number there and say, you know, if you ever need anything, um, please call me. And I've had people give me their phone numbers and say, you know, if you need something, call me. Well, I've never called any of them. But what was important to me and what made a difference for me was that they cared enough to give me their number. And I thank God that I didn't need to call them for anything. So even if they do call you and they're, you know, chattering away, listen, just listen to them. You can listen to them while you're folding laundry. You can listen to them while you're cooking dinner. You know, just acknowledge them with a oh and a uh-huh. You know, let them know you're listening. People really need to be listened to. It's so important, especially now, that we are good Christians to one another and to our fellow man. So with that being said, I'm not going to go on and on and on, but you know, you know in your heart what's the right thing to do. And as always, I love you.